<laughs> I was surfing the internet about a week after I graduated college. And it said that you could buy two lions for $120,000. And I was like, that's what I spent on my English degree. And I'm like, I should have bought two lions. Because <laughs> if you go into a job interview with two lions, what makes more of a statement in the English degree? Or one, if there are two candidates and one is like, hey, I wrote my thesis in Moby Dick and the other is like, I have two lions. <laughs> Oh, do you yeah. panic when you're late? Do you panic or you just, or it, you're, you're okay? Are you telling yourself time is an illusion or as you're late? Are you like, do you get the knot in your stomach? Well, yeah, I get the knot in my stomach. I mean, I think that the knot in my stomach is the, is the thing that usually motivates people to stop being late, right? <laughs> yes. Like, oh no, I'm a horrible person. How do I solve this problem? But me, I go, I'm a horrible person. I knew it. And then, <laughs> you know, from seventh grade till yesterday, uh, that's how it's, <laughs> that's how it's been. So yeah, I used to, um, I, uh, I was late to, I always was late to everything, you know, and it, I, I hated it. You know, I've always hated it because, you know, I'm black and there's an association. I don't know if you've heard, <laughs> but, uh, sometimes people go, you know, well, it's some color people time. And I'm like, uh, I always hated that. You know, because I I hate the stereotype of black people are always late because it's not black people that are always late. It was me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I do not represent all black people. So, <laughs> you know, outside of saying time is an illusion, I show up and I have to throw myself under the bus. I'm like, no, I'm uniquely irresponsible. It's not my entire culture sort of a thing, um, you know. And then I go into a rant about slavery. And usually people stop asking questions, which <laughs> you bring up. <laughs> Slavery. Taika Waititi, who did Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. Auditioned for his new film in January. Oh. And they called me in August. So, of course, I'm like, I don't even remember that script or the audition or anything. And they said, they, they'd like you to have it. It's between you and another person. They'd like you to have it by tomorrow, if you could. And I had just rolled up into my mom's place. So, basically, what I did was... I had my mom, who was 94, oh read for me. <laughs> and I had my sister, who is 69 and clinically schizophrenic, <laughs> very <laughs> fragile. She's like, she's like the, you know, Laura to my Tom in the glass. <laughs> and so I thought, well, you know, I mean, this is what it's going to be. And, and this is, you know, this is, you know, I don't like it, but this is what, you know, Taika is going to have to end up with. So I just noticed that when my sister was filming me, every time she would kind of come up and it would be like, <laughs> end up being the side profile of me. And I would say, no, man, you know, go stand over right next to mom and just do head on. And she was like, okay, okay. And then I'd say action. And then she would just, I don't know why, but she would take away and it would always end up being a side profile. So after several times, I just thought, you know what? You know, Tyke is going to get, he's going to get a side profile. <laughs> That's what he's gonna get. I will go out just to smile sometimes because I it's like smile therapy like I will notice that I feel better I it does work like the thing is that when you smile it does do that thing it's a little bit like laughing so inside it is changing so in a way it's an advantage to smile because you get the benefit of doing it but in another way it's super annoying that you have to do it because it's sort of being required but by doing the thing that's required for a super fucked up reason which is that you're supposed to be people pleasing you get this weird benefit of having smiled and you get all the endorphins and it feels better and then people smile back and it's this whole like loop of like energetic smiliness that you're creating in the world just because, but this is not the same, of course, as somebody telling you to smile. You're walking down the street and some guy's going smile. How is that? What's wrong with you? Just smile. Why are you smiling? It's not that. I'm talking about that. Um, and of course, now it's so weird because we're all wearing the masks. So I've tried to perfect the, the eye smile. <laughs> and it's super hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, was raised to please. 
a girl raised to please yes yes. no of course and then i have this face that you know nature gave me (laughs) that is a really you know smiley face of a sweet person people always say oh the sweet julia sweet you know you look at her and it's really 90 percent my face because actually i'm a mean horrible person (laughs) but i have this face that makes people think i'm nice and it even hoodwinked me for the first 55 years of my life until I realized that my personality didn't really go with my face. My face could be fucking badass tough face, but everywhere I go, hi, hi, it's this face. Phone sex, it was sort of a, I don't know, it was before the internet. I was really good at it. How so? Um, I sounded young. Because when I did it, you were a baby, Jackson. I did it to buy Christmas presents. <laughs> <That's> um, me. <laughs> it was a weird time. It just seemed like a fun thing that wasn't going to take that much time and whatever. It was really hard work. And I was really good at it because they have most of the calls come. So humiliating to say most of the calls come. They want like barely legal. They want like 18 year olds that won't say how old they're. And I was like, hey, I got to whisper because I just finished cheerleading practice. <laughs> oh my God. Change.